بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Some exercises about section 1.6 Suppose a ceiling fan manufacturer has the total cost function given by this and the total revenue function given by this uh, The question is find the, the profit function find the profit function Well, we remember that the profit function uh, equals the revenue function minus the cost function. So we can find the profit function by subtracting the revenue, which is 80 minus X minus the cost, which is 43X plus 1,850. So the profit would be 80X or 80 minus 43. We subtract the coefficients, so we will have 37x and minus 1850. So this would be the profit function. What is the profit on 30 units? So if the number of units is 30, so we replace x by 30 in the profit function and we get 37 times 30 uh, minus 1800. 50. So 37 times 30 minus 1850 and the answer is negative 740. Interpret your result. The profit is uh, negative. So this means that there is a loss of uh, $740 when producing 30 units. Uh, producing and selling 30 units, there is uh, a loss. How many uh, fans must be sold to avoid losing money? Well, to avoid losing money, uh, we have to get to the break-even point and the break-even when the profit is zero. So if we put the profit zero, which is 37x, minus 1850 equals to zero and then we take 1850 to the other side and divide by 37 we get 50 so uh, if we produce 50 units there will be produce and sell 50 units there there will be no loss after uh, selling more than 50 units, we will get some profits. A linear cost function is given by this. What are the slope and the c-intercept? Well, the slope is 5. That's the slope, the coefficient of x. And the c-intercept is 250. What is the marginal cost? The marginal cost is the slope of the cost function which is 5. What does it mean? Well, 5 can be written as 5 over 1, and this means that each uh, unit, each one more unit produced, let us say, each one more unit uh, produced, costs five dollar five dollar so this is the meaning of uh, the marginal cost because it is delta c over delta x so if the number of units uh, increased by one the cost will increase by five what are the fixed costs? The fixed costs here, this is the variable cost and this is the fixed costs. So the fixed costs is $250. Okay. How are your answers to parts A, B, and C are related? Okay. In part A, the slope is 5 and the slope is also the marginal cost. So we can say that the slope of the cost function is equal to the marginal cost. So this relates 
part A and B. Part A and C, the C intercept is 250, which is the fixed costs. So the C intercept is actually the fixed costs. Okay. What is the cost of producing one more item if 50 are currently being produced? Well, producing one more item, as we have seen, each one more item or units will cost $5. So the cost is $5. Uh, what about the number of units produced? Does it Is it important if 50 are currently being produced? What is the cost if 100 are currently being produced? Well, the number of units produced is not relevant here because whatever the number is, producing one more unit is just $5. So the answer in both cases here and here is $5. This is the cost of producing one more unit. A company charting its profits notices, notices that the relationship between the number of units sold, so X is the number of units sold, and the profit P is linear. So we can write P, the, li the profit, as uh, MX plus uh, B, okay? Uh, if 200 units sold results in $3,100 profit. Okay, so he's now giving me some points for the profit function. So I will use this uh, uh, equation, P minus P1 equals M times X minus X1, which, which we, you know as Y minus Y1. But Y here is the profit, okay? So I have been given that uh, if 200 units, so this is X1, okay, uh, sold, results in $3,100. This is the first profit, profit, okay? And another point, 250 units, so this is X2, will result in $6,000 profit. So this is P2. So we have two points and the question, write the profit function for this company and it's linear. Uh, so to find the profit function, we need to find the slope. And the slope is delta P over delta X. So 6,000 minus 3,100 over 250 minus 200. And you can use uh, the calculator and find the answer so the slope in this case is 58 so we have p minus p1 which is 3100 equals to the slope which is 58 times x minus x1 which is 200 and we can write uh, this equation solve it for p to find the profit function so i will have 58 uh, x and minus 58 now times negative 200 and i will add 3100 from the other side so i will get negative 8500 so this is the profit uh, function in this in this case now the question is find the marginal profit. Well, the marginal profit, as we know, is the slope of the profit function. So it is $58 uh, is the marginal profit. Uh, and it means producing one more unit, we get $58 uh, uh, as profit. A manufacturer sells belts for $12 per unit. So immediately I know the selling price. So I can write the equation of the revenue function. Rx would be 12x selling price times the number of units. And the cost function. Well, the cost function consists of uh, the fixed cost, which is 1,600, plus the variable cost, which is $8 p 
per unit. Find the break even point. Break even point uh, when the revenue equal to the cost. So when 8x plus 1,600 equals to 12x. So when 1,600 equals to 12x minus 8x, that's 4x and dividing 16 uh, zeros, two zeros over four will give you 400. So this is the number of units to break even. And if you want to find the point, you just uh, replace X by 400, either in the revenue or in the cost function to get 4,800. So this would be the revenue, uh, the, big, the break even point. A company manufactures and sells book cases. The selling price is this one per bookcase. So immediately you can write the revenue function. Once you know the selling price, you multiply the selling price times the number of units sold. The total cost function is linear and it costs and costs amount uh, to $50,000 for 2,000 break cases, uh, book cases. Ah, so he is giving me points now. So uh, the total cost is linear. So I, I will use this formula. C minus C1 equals M times X minus X1. And he will give me points. So first he said for 2,000, this is the number of units. So it's X1. The cost would be 50 thousand so this is c1 and the second point uh, for 800 book cases so this is x2 uh, i will have uh, it will cost me 32,120 this is cost 2 so now we need to use this information to find the equation of the total cost but i first i need to find the slope the slope is delta C over delta X. So I subtract uh, C2 minus C1 over, let me write it, I, uh, 2, okay, over uh, 800 minus 2000. Uh, evaluate uh, using the calculator 32120 minus 50,000 over 800 minus 2,000. So the answer is 14.9. So the slope, this is the marginal cost, by the way. That's the slope. Okay. So what would be the function, the cost function? C minus. C1, which is 50,000, equals M, which is 14.9, times X minus X1, which is 2,000. So I will get now the cost function if I solve this equation for C. So I will have 14.9X, that's the slope, and then I multiply 14.9 times negative 2,000 and add the 50,000. So the answer is 20 plus 2200. So this is the cost function. This would be the fixed cost, and this is the variable cost. Find the break-even quantity. Well, to find the break-even quantity, uh, the revenue should be equal to the cost. So 14.9x uh, plus 2200 should be equal to 54.9x. Now I will have 2200 equals 54.9 minus 14.9, that's 40x, and then divide 2200 by 40, the answer is 505. So this is the quantity to break even. Here we have the total cost function and the total revenue functions are graphed. And he wants me to label 
each function correctly. So which one of them he is asking is the total revenue and which is the cost function? Well, the revenue, as you see always, uh, is Rx equals a number times X. So the X intercept here and the Y intercept are zeros. So the revenue always pass, passes by the point zero, zero. So this line represents the revenue function. While the cost has a y-intercept, it has a y-intercept. And actually, the y-intercept of the cost, if you remember this one, is the fixed costs. So uh, always the cost starts from uh, not from zero because there is a fixed cost. So this is the cost function. Uh, determine the fixed costs. That's the fixed costs, 2000 Okay, $2,000. These are the fixed costs because the cost function, when X is zero, the cost is 2000 So when the number of units produced is zero, we get the fixed costs. Locate the break-even point and determine the number of units sold to break even. Well, I can see the break even. This is this is the break even point. It is the point of intersection between the revenue and the cost. The revenue should be equal to the cost. Determine the number of units sold to break even. It is 400. So 400 is the number of units sold, should be sold to break even. Okay. Estimate the marginal cost and the marginal revenue. Well, to find the marginal, uh, let me start by the marginal revenue, for example. To find the marginal revenue, this is the revenue line. I need to determine the slope from the line. So I need to choose two points. Let me choose this point, which is the break-even point, and these two points, okay? So I'm talking about this point and this point. So what is delta R uh, and delta X revenue, okay? So as you can see, the length of this line is 3,000. And the length of this line is 400. So the marginal revenue would be 3,000 over 400. And this will give you 7.5. So that's the marginal revenue. For the marginal cost, I need also to get the uh, a slope of the line. So let me uh, find now the slope of the line for the cost function. For the cost function, I will use this as X, okay? I'll go to here, and, and then I will have this rectangle now. This rectangle will determine the slope of the cost function. This length would be delta C, and this is delta X. Well, delta C is 3,000 minus 2,000, so that's 1,000. So, in fact, uh, marginal cost would be 1,000, that's delta C, over delta X, which is 400. So 1,000 over 400, and the answer is 2.5. So that's why we estimate, the, uh, that's how we estimate the marginal cost and the marginal revenue by finding, estimating the slope from the graph, the slope of each line. Here, this is the demand function, and this is the supply function, and the questions are, how many units are demanded when the price P is 100? So this is the demand function. This is the price. Here is the quantity. So if the price is 100, so this is the price, it's 100. What would be Q? So I go, I draw a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis. Then I meet with the curve. I go down, I meet with Q. So Q is 600. So if we produce 600 or 600 units uh, demanded when the price is 100, how many units supplied when the price is 100? You go to the supply function, the price again is 100, and you reach the curve, you go down, this would be the quantity supplied. So the quantity supplied when the price is 100, uh, three, 300 are 300 units. Now the question, Will there be a market surplus or a shortage when P when the price is 100? Surplus means more supplied. 
so supply is greater than demand uh, on that price at that price shortage more demand okay so you can see here that the demanded are 600 units demanded units number of units and we need to supply th uh, so the number of units supplied is 300 so 600 is greater than 300 demand is greater than supply so there is a shortage because we supply 300 but they need more they demand more but we have a shortage okay suppose the manufacturer of a certain board game will supply 10,000 games if the wholesale price is $15 okay so he's talking about supply function and he is giving uh, given uh, this is x number of units x1 uh, if we can call it q quantity so q1 the quantity is called q here and the price is b so this is q1 and this is p1 so i have a point q1 and p1 q1 is 10 thousand and p1 is 15. this is for the supply function okay and uh, 50 thousand units for the price 10. so for supply function i have this information it's a linear function and it passes by these two points the question uh, find the supply function assuming that the supply function is linear linear write its equation so the equation of the su supply function would be uh, p minus p1 equals the slope times q uh, minus q1 where where the slope is delta p because p here represents the y uh, coordinate over delta q represents the x coordinates so the slope would be 10 minus 15 over 5000 minus 10000 uh, it would be negative 5 over negative 5000 so the answer is uh, 0 0.001 1 over 1000 that's the slope so how to find the uh, function the supply function p minus p1 which is 15 equals 0 0.001 times q minus q1 which is 10,000 okay so if i solve uh, for p i can find the equation so the equation is 0 0.001 times q and then I multiply 0 0.001 times negative 10,000, okay? And I add 15, so the answer would be 5. So this is the supply function. Uh, a group of retailers will buy 80 televisions. So this is the number of units. Uh, when the price is $350. So this is the first point, 80, when the price is 350 And 120, if the price is 300 This is what buy, will buy this amount. So the demand. So let us find this this will will enables us to find the demand function the demand function and the supply function are linear okay so and we have this information so this would be uh, q1 and this is price one and this is quantity two and this is price two and the equation is p minus p1 equals m times q minus q1 and let us find the slope the slope is delta p which is 300 minus 350 over 120 minus 
80. It is negative 50 uh, over one uh, over 40, and that's negative 1.25. Remember that this is the demand function. Always the slope of the demand function is negative because when the quantity when the price increases, the demand decreases. So the function would be p minus 350 equals to negative 1.25 times q minus 80. When you solve this equation for p, you will have negative 1.25 q, and then you multiply negative 1.25 times negative 80, and you add 350, you get plus 450. So this is the demand function, okay? This is the demand function. He needs what? He's asking for the equilibrium point. So we need to find the supply function and the demand function and uh, put them equal to each other. Well, the supply, uh, the wholesaler is willing to supply. This is now the supply function, 60. So again, we have 60, this is Q1. Uh, but now it is the supply function. Uh, if 280 is the price, 280, this is price one, okay? And the other point, 140, quantity two, if the price is 370, this is the second point, all right? This is the supply function. And also, we will use the same formula, P minus P1 equals M times Q minus Q1, where M is 370 minus 280 delta P over 140 minus 60. And this will give you 370 minus 280 uh, over uh, 80. This is 1.9 over 8 or 1.125. So this is the slope. So P uh, minus 280 equals 1.125 times Q minus 60. If you solve it for P, you will have 1.125 and notice that the slope of the supply is positive, and that's always the case when it is linear. So multiply 1.125 by negative 60 and add 280 to both sides. So you will have plus 212.5. This is the supply function. And now to find the equilibrium price, the two functions should be equal. So P equals P, so negative 1.25Q uh, plus 450 should be equal to 1.125Q plus 212.5. And we solve this equation for Q. So we have negative 1.25 uh, and taking 1.125 to the other side. So we will have... Uh, negative 2.375Q equals. Now I have 212.5 and minus 450 when you take it to the other side. So I will have negative 237.5. And now dividing this by negative 2.375 you will get 100. So he is asking for what? Uh, the equilibrium point for the market. So this is the equilibrium quantity. To find the equilibrium price, I just uh, replace Q in any of the equations, supply or demand, uh, to find the equilibrium price. So 1.125 times 100 plus 212.5, this will give you 
25. So the equilibrium point is uh, 100 equilibrium quantity and 325 uh, dollar. This is the end of uh, these exercises. Have a nice time and study hard.